Hello all, welcome to the Embedded IoT Linux for Red Blue Teams course at Pentester Academy. Now in this video, let's further enhance our understanding of IoT rootkits and build on the previous example and now create a full-blown kernel mode network backdoor. So we are in step six. Uh, again, the architecture is identical to the previous videos. All the IP addresses, everything is identical. And we've already looked at NetFilter. So let's jump right in and look at our network backdoor. So I'm going to open up the file covert.c, which contains the network backdoor. Now building up on the previous video, the idea really is to create a net filter hook, right? So what we've done here is we have gone ahead and defined our hook structure. Uh, of course, we are going to look at IPv4 packets. And the idea is to look at IPv4 pre-routing. So if you remember the net filter diagram, NFIP pre-routing is pretty much as soon as the packets actually come in to the machine, right? After having passed some basic sanity checks. So this is where we are going to run our net filter hook and monitor packets to see if we can find our covert channel packets and then show those uh, show that data on the screen of the covert channel. So once again, the rest of the stuff is very similar to what we've done in the previous video. So let's actually move to our hook function, which is right here on top. Okay. So the way I've kind of defined this is if the IoT device receives a TCP packet in which both the SYN and the reset flags are set. The source and destination port numbers are both 9999. Then the network backdoor concludes that this is a packet sent by its command and control. Then it looks at the payload, picks out all of that data and shows it uh, you know, to us on screen, basically in var log messages. Of course, we could also have executed whatever we received in the data section, but I just don't want to create and give you something uh, which can be misused immediately. You can program that trivially by using kernel helper functions. So in this video, all we want to do is create that network backdoor and covert channel, and then have another machine send those command and control packets so that uh, the IoT device receives it and this backdoor decodes it. So inside the hooking function, what we are doing is we get the IP header. And after that, we make sure that this is a TCP packet. And if it is a TCP packet, we go ahead and uh, look into the TCP header. And then we check if the source port and the destination port are all 9999s. And if both the SYN and the reset flag have been set on the TCP header. So if that is the case, our conclusion is that this is uh, probably one of our market packets. And we go ahead and try to get access to the data portion of the packet. And if there is any data, then we conclude this is part of our covert channel. We print out the source IP, the destination IP, uh, the in device from where we received this, which is the interface, right? So this is where we Go ahead, copy this out into a new variable. This is where we are printing the source and destination IP, source and destination port. And after that, we go ahead and print some pointers. And then finally, we end up printing the data portion of the packet. Of course, this is a covert channel, so we don't want it to be processed any further. And hence, we return NF drop which basically tells the net filter, uh, you know, uh, which tells net filter that we are no longer interested and we are effectively dropping and stopping processing of this packet. Well, so that's how this will work. Let's go ahead, compile it. Let's copy out the 
backdoor covert.ko this is the kernel module to our tftp server and then let's go to our console let's go ahead and make sure we are in the custom directory let's do a tftp dash g get dash r remote file covert.ko from the server 110.20 covert.ko and then let's insert the covert channel and after that let's actually go ahead and make sure none of the other modules are running so I'm going to remove the network module we demoed in the last video so now only the covert module is running of course uh, this is just so that we don't have to deal with too many tracebacks. Now let's monitor the kernel log. Let's go back here. And what I'm going to do is now let's generate our marker packet. And we are going to use uh, do this using a tool called nping, which you actually get when you install nmap. So you can do an apt install nmap, should get nping as well. So we are telling nping send one packet. It's a TCP packet where both flags sin and reset have been set. The source destination ports are both 9999. And inside the data section, after that, send the string message one and send all of this to IP address 192.168.110.10. So let's send this. Let's look at our terminal. And there you go. If you notice, our covert channel was detected and we have message one in here. And of course, we could pretty much send any data that we like. And keep in mind that these could be actual commands being sent to the remote system. And the remote system, the kernel backdoor, may go ahead and act upon these commands, run them, you know, do a variety of other things. The whole idea is really to be able to create a covert channel within the network stack by leveraging NetFilter. That's the core idea here. And you can see that we have succeeded in doing that. Fantastic. So this is what I had in mind for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. And you should be able to try this out yourself. As I mentioned, the covert commands can be executed using kernel helper functions. But if you're really interested in looking at that detail, check out the uh, Linux rootkit course, which we are going to be posting on Pentester Academy very soon. That will have a lot more details of how to approach this in a much more structured way. Our idea in this course is just to show you that it is possible to do all this on the latest version of the kernel on an IoT device, right? Fantastic. So I, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have, please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the security and infosec community. Thank you. Have a great day ahead.